Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. This is Bobby. So this is probably unexpected to a lot of you guys that have been following the show considering we've only been doing one show a week and we've been dropping them on Sundays. So what I plan on doing from here on out is we're going to do a daily show drop. And it's going to be, you know, not as long. It won't be an hour for the most part, most of the time. But what we'll do is we'll talk about the daily news, a couple of, you know, the more important things going on in the case, the more interesting things. Um, and then Sunday's show, we'll use that day to wrap it all up in a nice little bow for you guys so that you can, uh, you know, do your own dive, like I always say. You know, on the on the main show, I always tell you guys, take what you hear and do your own research. It's all, everything that I talk about on here is all stuff that's documented in the news. You know, it's, I I, dis I disagree with Lee when he talks about things being conspiracy theories, when they're obviously not, things such as this. I, you know, anyone who pays attention can see what's going on, can see that the, the powers that be are obviously moving their feet very slow in this case, and there's an obvious reason. And there's just so many odd things in and around this case that it makes it hard to swallow that it's just a, a regular old run-of-the-mill Justice Department, we got him, he ended up killing himself, game over, that's the end of it kind of case. Because it, it just seems like so much more. And when you look at it from um, a, a broader perspective and you take a moment and you kind of digest all the facts... I don't. I really don't understand how anyone can come to the conclusion that there's not a lot more here to be pulled back, and especially now with the the evidence that the FBI is looking deeper into Prince Andrew, which is definitely needed because he has to answer for things. Even if he wasn't, if he didn't do the things that he's accused of, he needs to answer for those things. But he needs to answer for them himself in in front of you know the authorities and and not through some mouthpiece provided to him by his you know royal blood. See, if it was you or I who were in the same position as Andrew, there would be no quarter. There would be no way that you or I would even be able to plead our case. Even if we were innocent, we would probably end up going to jail. That's just the way the justice system works, and I don't, I don't agree with the way it works. It needs to be reformed. You know, some of the things Trump is doing is, a, you know, a couple of steps in the right direction, but it needs to go, it needs to go much further. A lot of things need to be changed. You know, we have a two-tier justice system right now that is absolutely and positively set up where there's one set of rules for them, meaning the elite and the powerful, and there's another set of rules set up for you and I. And that is not the way this country was founded. That's not what the Constitution provides all of us. Everyone has equal justice under the law in this country. That's the way it should be. It, it doesn't matter your color, your creed, your ethnicity, your gender. If you have five genders, it does not matter. Everybody deserves their their innocence until proven guilty, obviously. And, you know, if, if accused of something, they, they deserve their day in court. But what we have going on here now is we have people that are accused of heinous crimes, of devious, disgusting things. And they've never even had to sit before a judge, really. They've never sat before a hard-nosed a hard -nosed prosecutor, uh, a weiser man or a... Uh, a Rod Rosenstein or one of these guys that were working the Russia conspiracy. And, you know, I'm I'm all for any sort of investigation into any politician if there's even a, a, a hint of, of serious corruption. But if there's no serious corruption and you're using the tools that are provided to you in Congress and the Senate to undo an election... You just can't – you can't have that kind of stuff. And that just – you know, I think a lot of people were confused when we were talking about that, th thinking it was off topic when in reality it's really the same topic because it's the same sort of justice system at play. It's the same sort of players that are making the moves on the chessboard while you and I are busy trying to, you know, make $2 into $50 so that we can provide for our families. So what you have here is you have these these two stories. They're 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 – interconnected and they collide and they intertwine and I know it makes a lot of people uncomfortable and there's a lot of partisanship in this country right now and a lot of tribalism and I know people that are listening to this show are turned off when when the subject gets turned towards the Democrats if that's the way they lean politi politically but you have to get outside of your echo chamber I implore you to get outside of your echo chamber I'm, I you know I, re I won't be using this show as a hit piece for anybody. I follow the facts in the Epstein case where they lead me, and everything else besides that is opinion, and I state that plainly. So, you know, 
if you think you know Lee's politics, you, you're wrong. And if you think you know my politics, you're certainly wrong because there's a lot of things that I agree with from both sides. It just seems that I lean one way right now because the pendulum has swung so far to the left and they've decided to do things that are just absolutely setting a dangerous precedent going forward for whoever the president is and and for the, the fate of the nation, which is just absolutely unacceptable. Everyone should be outraged by that sort of stuff. Just like everybody should be outraged that Jeffrey Epstein was able to buy a second island. You heard me right, a second island under an, uh, under someone else's name. He had a front man, but it wasn't just any front man. You know, you have yourself a very powerful a very powerful businessman. You know, the guy was uh the head of um all sorts of Middle Eastern companies, all kinds of big Middle Eastern companies. He um right now he's the C the CEO of DP World. Um he the other company he was uh, the former chairman of was Dubai World. I'm sure people are familiar with that that word, that name, that company. They're a very powerful company in that region of the world construction. And anyway, this this gentleman was used as a front to buy this island. So you ask at least I ask myself, how could somebody who is as powerful as this man here, who is connected to all sorts of royals throughout the region, how could he be duped by a guy like Jeffrey Epstein? How could he be duped into buying an island under his name for a man like Jeffrey Epstein? It is, I just don't, I just don't understand how this could be possible. You know, you have a guy like Jeffrey Epstein who everybody knows what the deal is. I don't even want to hear, oh, they don't know what, they don't know what's going on. He, he, they didn't know. The, we knew nothing. That's not the case. It's just not the case. I'm sure some people didn't didn't have the slightest idea. You know, people that were in the outer rings of his atmosphere, I'm sure they had zero idea what he was truly up to or what he was capable of. But the people that were close to him, those people need to seriously seriously take a look in the mirror and and say to themselves is it really worth protecting whoever we're protecting and even if it's yourself how could you live with, with yourself being involved in something like that i just, it's just i don't understand how how anyone could possibly do it i just don't know but anyway the the island was purchased for 22 million dollars and um well we have to ask questions now so how was the connection made between Epstein and Bin Solomon? How how are they connected? How did they know each other? What what circles were they running in? And how were they so close that they would do this 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 business deal where he would buy the island in his name, but it was truly Epstein's island? The sale closed on uh, January 28th of 2016, as reported by the Miami Herald, and there was no reference to Ben uh, Solomon anywhere in the uh, documentation. So, <laughs> my question is, how in the world does Epstein get a man like this to put something in his name, especially after he was already convicted of being a pedophile? And it should ask, make you ask yourself, too, who else is involved? And how, how would these, these people know Jeffrey Epstein well enough to use their name in something like this sort of a business deal with this sort of money? And obviously, he'll, this sort of scrutiny, you know it's, co it's coming this way if he ever gets, bust, if he ever gets caught. So what, what sort of information does Epstein have on a man like this? It makes you wonder. Does Epstein have the, the, the dirt on this on this gentleman as well? And I would say yes. I don't have any evidence of that. This is this is all just this is all a, a guessing game from for me from with, with this certain um part of the topic. But I would say that Epstein definitely one hundred percent in my opinion has to have something on this man for him to step out on a limb like this. Because if not, well why in the world would he even attempt to be involved with Epstein. He has all the money in the world. He has all the, the money, you know, you could possibly ever want. And I'm sure that he has access to more if he needs it. He doesn't need to be in bed with Jeffrey Epstein. So either A, him and Epstein were involved more deeply than he's letting on, 
or B, he was introduced to Epstein for Epstein to cultivate as an asset, which is possible considering his family's ties, meaning Bin Suleiman's family's tie, family ties in, uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi. So, you know, once again, we come to a point where the web is just massive and there is there's really no end to it you look around you say to yourself all right well i think i got something cornered here and you start untangling it and you get to the bottom and boom there's another knot and it's even a a, a more intense and more painstaking task to unravel that one and it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and that's the way that this whole entire operation was layered in my opinion they layered it out perfectly it was set up perfectly it's too perfect to be set up by some failed Wall Street guy, uh, you know, high school teacher turned Wall Street guy, for him to, uh, you know, come up with this whole entire scam on his own is a lot for me to swallow, like a whole elephant worth for me to swallow, which is meaning I definitely don't believe that. So, you know, we, everybody who's been listening to the show knows how I feel about this situation, who I believe is involved, the players are. Obviously, I have no, once again, I have no evidence to to prove 100% that that somebody like the Mossad or the CIA was running an operation through Epstein but that should be the media's job the legacy media's job they're being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes millions of dollars I'm you know an, an independent operation doing this on my own you know spending my own time tracking down these leads cultivating the the sources that I do have which aren't very many in this case but this is a topic worth talking about it's a topic that we can't forget, we can't let go. This is a topic that we all need to make sure that we're aware of still until there's some sort of end play. And by end play, I mean there needs to be justice in this top in in this situation. We can't just let this one ride out. This ain't this ain't just some white collar crime. This isn't Martha Stewart. This isn't even Enron. This is bigger than all of that. This is the very moral fabric of our society, and I don't say that lightly. Because I'm I'm not the type of person that wants to, you know, regulate anyone's morality or, or steer anyone's morality because everybody has a right to believe what they believe and, you know, live their life the way they choose to live their life. But some things are so heinous like like sex trafficking and, and, and pedophilia and all these different things that Epstein was accused of. These things are so abhorrent that no right-thinking individual, no, no right-minded individual, no matter what their political stance is, no matter what their leanings are, no matter if they're tribalistic as hell or if they've been in the echo chamber for the last four years, five years, whatever it may be, there's no excuse for people to let this slide. We get so mad about things that aren't even that important in the grand scheme of things. We 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 spent two years, three years over this Russia investigation that wasn't even real. You know, people talk about conspiracy theories and, oh, this is a conspiracy theory and that's a conspiracy theory and, oh, you know, this isn't, there's no way that this could be possible. When in reality, what you've seen on the mainstream media for the last three years, the whole Russia collusion delusion has been nothing but a conspiracy theory. And yet they spin it like... Everybody else is crazy, like people that are asking hard questions or conspiracy theorists or people sitting around with tinfoil hats and blah, blah, blah. See, that that's not that's not who I am, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, these topics are controversial, but I, I don't, I'm not that sort of person. I don't I don't believe in a lot of these conspiracies, to be honest with you. But when it comes to these sort of political cover ups, which this is more of a cover up than a conspiracy, which you know, we can debate if it turns into a conspiracy after the cover-up, which sometimes it does. But this is more of a cover-up than anything and, and, and justice not being served. And that is the, the angle that I'm always looking at it from when I'm on the show. And these dailies will be more of more of that. You know, we won't be – I won't be getting into, you know, any other stuff really on these dailies unless I, you know, title it something else if, if you see it titled a, a different topic obviously and you're not interested in that just don't don't download that that segment and just keep it moving and go to your 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 go-to spot for your epstein news will be this every day at least you know 15 20 minutes we'll we'll have a little chat and i'll drop some uh some information that you know is breaking across the mainstream media or you know the news or information that i dig up because i get you know there's a lot of information that I've I've dug up or things that have been passed on to me that I can't really 
say for one way or the other if it's true or not. So it's not even stuff I'm going to bring up on on the podcast because I feel that we deserve this. We this topic deserves us to be as straightforward and as hard news as we possibly can with the facts. And you know, when things are speculation, I try to let you guys know, hey, it's in my opinion or I, you know, I think that sort of thing because I don't ever, you know, there's there's a place for opinion and then there's a place for hard fact. Now, once the hard facts given, that's what we're here for. We're here to drop our opinion on what the hard facts are. But you can't go around making up facts to fit your own confirmation bias. And that's what we have going on in the mainstream media right now with this whole entire situation, you know, the whole Ukraine thing and Russia and the cognitive dissonance towards the whole entire Epstein situation, how nobody talks about it anymore, how the media how, how the media has gas been gaslighting the population for at least the last 20 years. So it goes on and on and on and on. And in reality, all we want, especially I know the audience and the, the fans of this show, what we want is we want some damn justice. We want these people brought before the man and we want them sat down and we want them answering the hard questions. We want Prince Andrew to answer the hard questions now that he's now that the FBI is all over him. We want, you know, Mohammed bin Salman to answer these hard questions. We want every one of these guys that have been involved with Epstein and his inner circle and, you know, business dealings, money transferring, that sort of thing, spending time together, vacationing. These are the people that need to be talked to. And instead, what we get from the media is more and more of the, 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 the delusional nonsense. If Trump is as bad as everybody thinks he is and how, and how he comes across a lot of times, then he will sink himself. He doesn't need the media to make up fake news about him. All that does is hurt the media's credibility and bolster his case that there's a witch hunt on against him. They need to regroup. The Democrats need to regroup. They need to take a step back. And they need to come up with a different plan, and that plan needs to be winning back the middle class and winning at the ballot box because that's where they lost. And the rest of the rest of it has just been political theater. Like I said, I know that's that a lot of people that listen to the show that might not make them comfortable and they might dismiss it offhandedly. But like I said, get out of your echo chamber for a minute and take a look. You know, it's bad news all around, and the whole entire. Epstein case is wrapped up inside of this as well because what's going on there is taking away from what should be one of the biggest cases in the history of the media with all of the juicy details and all of the big names and the big scalps to be had. This is the kind of case where people make their bones. This is the kind of case where an investigative journalist can truly, truly reach the, the top of their field and get the exposure that, that you, you crave, that you want your your art, your creation to to see. You want the things that you create to be out there in the public eye and you want people to have exposure to your work so that A, you can, you know, spread the, the message and B, so that when you're doing this sort of stuff, you know, people hear your show or your 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 read your co- your column and they're like, oh yeah, that's credible that's a credible provider of news. This person, you know, has been steering me the right way. Even if that person is bombastic or their delivery is rough and and raw, it doesn't matter. What really matters is the content and if they're BSing you or not. Because we all know that's the biggest problem with the media these days, right? They they use these like really salacious words and these eye popping headlines and then you you get down and you read the actual article and it doesn't even match up with the headline. So they're driving clicks, but not only they're driving clicks, they're trying to drive the narrative. And when they drive that narrative, what it does is it takes away from these other cases that they should be focused on and takes away resources that they should be using to focus on things such as this Epstein case. But instead, we get more of the same, more of the nonsense, more of the, you know, well, there's nothing there. He just, you know, he killed himself. None of the other coincidences matter. Stop asking questions. We'll tell you what's good. We'll tell you when it's when we know and when we know what happened. We don't need to have any kind of trial. No subpoenas need to happen. Go ahead. Let's seal these files. Well, guess what? I'm here to tell you that's not going to happen this time. We, as, as, as citizens, we need to make sure we let these people in power know that at the very least, children are off limits in our society. At the very least, that has to be sacred. Because if that's not sacred, what sort of society do we are we going to live in where we don't even care if powerful people are, are exerting that power over weaker young girls and children in some cases 
to to be used and and treated in unimaginable ways that human beings should never be treated in. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty tired of the of the mainstream media BSing us and telling us what they want us to know and not really getting down to the bare bones of the stories and, and just reporting the facts and letting us decide for ourselves. I'm tired of them thinking we're too stupid to understand what's going on. So what we're going to do on on this podcast and on these daily drops is we're just going to discuss the news as it is. We're going to make sure that we, you know, we talk about things that are factual, things that can be proven, things that are sourced. And if they're not, we'll say it's speculation or we'll say according to sources. That way you guys understand very clearly what's going on. I'm not, we're, I'm not going to use any trick words here or any kind of, you know, silliness. What I want you guys to be able to do is come here, get your Jeffrey Epstein news. And sometimes if it intersects with another story, we'll be covering that, like I said. And there'll be other things that, you know, that, that I interest me that I'll be dropping segments on, you know, there'll be, um, I'm thinking about doing a segment called tales from the trail. You know, as most of you know, who listen to the show, I, I climb mountains and I hike and here in the desert Southwest, there's always an adventure to be had. And I'm going to be doing some live broadcasts from some of my adventures for you guys. And, you know, we're just going to try and get that content out there and I'll make sure everything's labeled correctly so that you get what you want when you want it. And I I just can't believe how much interest there has been in this podcast. We did it just on a whim, you know. Certain subjects get me fired up and Lee appeases me every now and then because I do some other work for him on some other things as far as sports betting and stuff goes on some on one of his other shows. So he appeases me every now and then, but this subject has even caught his attention and his interest and has obviously caught the interest of a lot of other people considering how many downloads of the show there has been. And I really I thank you guys a lot for for keeping up your uh, support and downloading the show week in and week out and chiming in, sending us emails. I love all of that stuff, even if it's bad. If, if there is something that you did not enjoy in the show, let me know that, too, because constructive criticism is definitely something that I'm willing to take because, you know, I'm only human as well. So. I'm learning as I go. This is, you know, I've done radio work in the past and I've been on podcasts before in the past, but this is pretty much the first time where I've been in charge of the whole entire format with these dailies like this. So going forward, you know, make sure that you guys are, you know, pointing me in the right direction. If there's certain things you want to talk about or if there's, you know, a segment that I drop that's not, it doesn't interest most of you. Obviously, I'll be able to see that from the views and stuff like that, but what I want to do do here is build a thriving community where we all interact with one another and we, we, we get the news that we want. So if you guys have any leads or articles from the news that you want me to talk about or discuss as, uh, as far as the Jeffrey Epstein case goes, please send them over to the email uh, over at um, the – at the website. You can go to the, uh, the – Jeff, it's jeffepstein.com. Our new website, I believe that's the name. I hope it is. If not, I'll update the um, description. I'll drop the link in the descri- in the description. That way you guys can just follow that link in case I uh, boneheaded that actual uh, address there. But going forward, I'll be dropping one of these every day. Some of them will be longer than this. Some of them will be shorter. And we'll just uh, we'll see where it takes us. We'll follow this case to the very end and we'll see if there's truly any justice left for for people in this country because the way it's trending now, it certainly doesn't look that way. All right, until tomorrow, everybody, I hope you guys have a great night. See you later.